What's happening guys? You are back on the firing line with Matt and Joe. Hey everybody, how's it going? So, it's always been important to us, but now it seems like it's more pertinent than ever to have a home defense plan. Um, so, uh, Joe and I kind of uh, wanted to bring to you where um, good firearms for home defense. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of them out there from pistols to shotguns to rifles to crossbows, whatever you think of. But we wanted to bring them to you in installments of what we think. So we'll do pistols first. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yes. Um, so on the table here, a uh, bunch of pistols. We have um, pretty much your three most common types of guns. Uh, four, I guess. Yeah, um, and, and we're not just talking about the firearm, but we're also talking about the action as well. Right, yes, yeah, so excuse me. Yeah, not the most common brand or the most popular gun, but of between these six guns, that's pretty much every gun is made one of these six ways for the most part. And, and you know, here's another thing too. As we progress through showing you different uh, firearms and different capabilities, one thing uh, Matt and I were talking about before we got into the show was that we want everybody to think about this. Um, use the weapon that you are most proficient with. Don't necessarily go, you know, with, hey, this one weapon is the best for home protection, unless you're gonna go out and take classes and train, and that's super important. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because, you know, I mean, anybody can press the trigger fast, but you gotta be able to do it reliably and, you, you know, reload, fix a malfunction, because with Murphy's Law, oh, you know, the your gun's gonna, you know, hopefully not, but with Murphy's Law, it'll malfunction when you need it the most, you know. So that's when you want it to just be second nature for um, all your remedial action, all that good stuff. Yep. Um, so, Joe, why don't you start down on that end with more of the uh, traditional... All right, uh, of course, you know, you've heard a lot of people talk about revolvers, revolvers being good for home protection, and here we've got a couple of examples. Uh, we have the Smith & Wesson, the uh, Jared Mikulik uh, version here of the uh, 45 ACP Smith & Wesson revolver. I think it's the uh, 625. Yeah, that's all, a great gun. Yep, we also have another uh, Smith & Wesson gun here, a nickel-plated uh, 357 Magnum. It's like a, a little gut gun. Chief special type little guy. Yep. Yeah. Um, down here we have, oh, and keep in mind, both of these shoot in single action and double action. Uh, we also have here a Glock 19, a very traditional gun that a lot of people carry at home for self-protection. Yeah, I would and, say the Glock 19, I mean, especially over the past five or six years, this gun has probably became one of the most popular home defense and carry gun. Yeah, and it's reliable, which is something that's important. Yeah. And that's something you're going to find in all of these firearms here in what we're showing you. We believe these are reliable guns. Of course, like every gun, you got to go out and practice to yeah. make sure yeah. that it's not a limit. Yeah, you need to shoot the heck out of it. Um, I know some people think two or three hundred rounds is a lot. I think you should put a minimum of 500 through any gun before you make a determined decision is it good to go or not. And right. 500 would be on my absolute lowest end, you know. And that's trying with um, different ammunition too. Exactly. Run a few different ammos through every time you get a gun. Um, what about well, next? Uh, next here we have the HK USP. Uh, this one is in nine. Uh, you can, usually you'll find this in 45. And uh, in a 45 model, it's very comfortable as well as the nine millimeter. Uh, but you have this is a single action and double action. Uh, it also has a decocker and a safety, which you'll find a lot of firearms do not have. And it's a nice feature. Right. Um, very reliable gun as well. Very well proven. And uh, that's another gun that uh, you might. Yeah, and so a good, a good, what a lot of people will like about these um, for home defense is the fact that once you load it, you put your magazine in, then you can decock it, you can drop the hammer basically, and turn it into a, a double action trigger. Right. Um, and that way it's not a real sensitive trigger for a home defense gun. Um, if I had this gun for home defense, I would be carrying it, or I would have it like that probably. Yeah. Um, just because you don't want a real super light trigger you know, when you first grab this thing at 2 in the morning or something. Yeah, you never know what your uh, drone's going to do. But yeah, these UH, U, USPs are uh, built like tanks. Um, we've, we've seen them really, really push the limit of round counts before. Absolutely. And then, of course, down at the uh, end here, we have two 1911s, both shooting 45s. Um, but we kind of point out that uh, these are on different spectrums of, of price range. Yeah. Both are very reliable, good guns, uh, used very well. and. Um, practice with all the time. 
Um, yeah, it's, um, you know, where I, the, like Glocks, your M&Ps, HKs, things like that, I, they are the ultimate in reliability. Uh, I think those, all, those guns set the standard for reliability um, and ease of maintenance. Very true. Um, a 1911 can be just as reliable, but maybe not for as long before you need to ma do some maintenance. That's um, very true, so especially it, the tighter tolerance. Right. Um, so it's more of a... Uh, I think a, a dialed in end user is what this gun really takes. I mean, they all take. Well, you've that. personalized it, you've changed out some of the parts and stuff uh, inside oh, yeah. without going overboard and spending a whole lot of money, which makes another point, especially before we close out this, uh, this segment here. In looking at all of these guns, you're going to notice that some are more expensive than others. And when you consider self protection uh, or self defense at home and using a firearm, make sure that you pick the firearm that you are most willing to let go of just in case anything happens and you don't get that firearm back. Because there's a huge difference of losing this Glock 19 versus losing the thousand dollar USP. Um, you know, that, that's just fact. And, and same even in the 1911. And you can see all these guns are just as reliable. Exactly. And uh, when Joe refers to losing, um, you know, if obviously someone breaks into your house and you have to fire shots into them, you're going to go to court and the gun's going to be used as evidence. So. Prepare to give that gun up for quite a while, um, maybe forever. Yeah. So that's what he's saying. Um, and who knows no, how they'll treat it. Don't let that decision alone dictate, you know, like, if you have a high-quality gun, then use it. You know, it's your prerogative. Just know that um, if it does cross that line, you're going to have to forfeit that thing into evidence. Yep. So something to think about. Food for thought. And one more thing I wanted to bring up about the uh, little Chief Special gun there is uh, Joe and I have seen countless times at the gun store people come in and wanting to buy that little gun for their wife, for their wife yep. or for them because it's their first gun and what I will say if there's any gun that is made for an expert it is that little gun right there yeah that is probably the hardest gun to shoot of every gun on this table yet it's the first one that new gun owners go to um, so, you know, that's just one of those uh, kind of myths that you hear about, like you need to have a little tiny revolver, you know, because if you're a lady, you can't handle the bigger one, where in reality, that Jerry Mikulik Pro would recoil much less right. and be much easier for anybody, woman or man, to shoot. Um, yep. That's so, you know, keep that in mind. I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, that gun is a very popular pistol that those chief special type, you know, 38s and 357s. Um, so keep that in mind. And again, with your 1911s, uh, you can buy at a lower end Rock Island and they are just fine, but run the heck out of it. That's the good thing about it not being expensive is, I mean, Joe had personally replaced, I mean, half the internals on this thing for me because... <laughs> I mean, the the 19 pound spring was down to like seven pounds. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't when he got it back uh, originally. It wasn't quite meshing, but we yeah. finally got it working pretty good. And yeah, it's been operational since. So. Yeah, and so I mean, I've shot it enough to where I've had to send it off, you know, and get new parts. And so that's the kind of stuff we're talking about when we say vet your gun. So even though it's an inexpensive gun. I know that it works because I've personally shot 10,000 rounds or so through it, you know, just like with the Glock 19s and anything on here. Yep. Um, the more you shoot it, the more, and you well, know, you're going to build trust in that weapon. And it's like we said in the beginning, you know, become proficient, and that's the weapon that you're going to fall back on for self defense. Yeah. So. And uh, so this will kind of end our pistol segment here. Um, one thing to say as far as home defense goes, uh, somebody gets shot with a handgun, they're probably going to run away out of your house. Um, you know, don't expect them to uh, disappear into a shower of sparks like in the movies or something. <laughs> um, generally, unless that somebody gets hit in a vital spot, like in the brain where it's a lights out, generally with a pistol somebody's probably just going to get hit and not want to get shot anymore and take off, okay? So keep that in mind, um, and we'll address that in other videos when we talk about long guns coming up here. So stay tuned for uh, On the Firing Line talking about long guns, and uh, we'll be back to you on the firing line with Matt and Joe. Have fun. Be safe. All right. Till next time. <laughs>